realize one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. And here's your host, Miss Kim Robinson. is God's field, and we are his children and his seeds, planted on good soil or bad soil from one's actions, ways, and deeds. Uh, we got seeds in the field, with many dreams to fulfill, too many seeds getting killed, Lord, we need your will, to restore and rebuild, no more seeds getting killed, we got seeds in the field, with many dreams to fulfill, too many seeds getting killed, Lord, we need your will, to and reveal. No more seeds getting killed. I feed them God's word like Gerber babies. I burp them. Give them a verbal sermon. They learning, growing in purpose. Fully grown, it's on, and now they putting and working. Exercising, they teaching, they skilled and fighting. No demons in this battlefield. If killer be killer, and it's killing season. Brothers blasting heaters without even having good reason. Possessed by them demons, the reasons the bullets squeezing. Positions. Bickering, fleeing the murder scene and he's leaking, tripping and covered in blood, he bleeding, he's wheezing, coughing up blood, asking for Jesus for forgiveness for his sick, sadistic way of living, just in the midst of dying, he prayed this, Lord receive my soul, I'm about to get killed, I understand I'm a seed in your field, we got seeds in the field, with many dreams to fulfill, too many seeds getting killed, Lord we need your will, to restore and rebuild, no more seeds getting killed. We got seeds in the field with many dreams to fulfill. Too many seeds getting killed. Lord, we need your will to restore and rebuild. No more seeds getting I'm killed. I'm hotter than hot pockets with rockets going to Mars and I'm about to spar with Mayweather. I'm way better. He just paid better. Move the dough like future. Talking too much, I mute you. I flip but no birds. I'm strapped like Stephen Curve. Free. Government control Illuminati, they controlling our minds. Seem that all we can find is guns and knives, killing our husbands and wives. Such a shame that being a black man in this day mean that you win the gang or you win the cell being gay. No way, that's not me, not I. I don't get high, but I fly on the coat in the field. Built like steel, I will overcome any troubles in my life. No strife. Me and wife doing 80 in the night, laughing at all the haters, conversators, conversing, but they hurting, cause I'm doing me, I stay flea, rocking Fendi, Ferragamo, Gucci, Louis, got racks on top of racks, plaques on top of plaques, you swing, I'm swinging back, I'm young, gifted, and black, so as I attack, like I'm running out the backfield, I understand I'm a seed in the field, I'm a seed in the field, I'm a seed in the field, I'm a seed in the field. Got dreams to fulfill, and on Jesus we build, cause he's a hand on the tip. Now that's my seed in the field, who had dreams to fulfill, still can't believe he was killed. Lord, we need your will, to restore and rebuild. No more seeds getting killed. I raise my son with purpose, be great on this earth surface. So great he correlated the name written in cursive. Since birth I know he was the young king to bring order. Like Martin Luther King had a dream, now he's a martyr. Started for the Spartans in college, a full scholarship. Never would have thought he got hit, just home visiting. Lord forgive my urge to snap and go ballistic. The devil want me back to my old ways of living. But you saved me from them days and gave me a better vision. So I'm charging all his peers to carry on his tradition and solemnly swear to be diligent handle business but that i and yeah we honoring tremendous and marching every year we repping you to the ending remembering them times we shared nothing could bear just wishing you was here in heaven we know you there got a thousand million prayers for everybody who cared that knew you was a blessing on earth when you was here even though you gone your legacy lives on long live god of my seeds to live strong Long live key ear, my seeds to live on. We got seeds in the field, with many dreams to fulfill. Too many seeds getting killed, Lord, we need your will. To restore and rebuild, no more seeds getting killed. We got seeds in the field, with many dreams to fulfill. Too many seeds getting killed, Lord, we need your will. To restore and rebuild, no more seeds getting killed.
Uh, if you don't know, you reap what you sow. What goes around, come back around for you. Plant good seed and good soil. You. Be loyal, your kids is watching you. Look up to your pops who's there for you. Plant good seed and good soil. You. And remember, Christ died for you. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Awesome song. Awesome, awesome. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. And thank you for tuning in to Let's Talk Talk Show on my beloved radio. I am your beloved talk show host, Chanel Lynn, and a special thanks to the lovely Miss Kimmy Kim and Jerry Royce at PositivePower21.org. We have a special treat on the show with us tonight. She is a registered nurse, a social worker. She has a degree in psychology. She's also served five years in the U.S. Navy. She's a single mom, and she writes poetry sometimes, and she loves helping people who want to help themselves. Now, she's a little shy, and she's sharing her story for the very first time right here on Let's Talk Talk Show. So please, let's give her a warm welcome and a hand clap. Um, let's welcome the beautiful Shiro, as I like to call her, Miss Sharon Burrell. Did I say your name right? How are you this evening, Sharon? Chanel, I'm well. How are you? It's so lovely and wonderful to hear your voice. I'm glad you're doing lovely. <laughs> I'm doing very Thank well you. myself. <laughs> yes, honey. Um, I am so honored to have you on the show tonight. I think you're an amazing woman. You've accomplished so much in spite of, you know, what you've gone through um, in your life. It makes me feel special that, you know, you're sharing your story for the first time on my show, (laughs) Sharon. Yay! It's a blessing to me, girl. (laughs) Chanel, thank you for asking me. You're like the biggest supporter, Sharon. Seriously, though, you know, you're the biggest supporter. You're very caring. You know, you share my posts and everything. Like, you're a wonderful cheerleader. You encourage me um, to keep going, you know, just with the things that, you know, you do to show support. I think you are uh, an example of how we ought to be toward one another. You know, we ought to encourage one another you know, and support one another, encourage one another to, you know, keep doing what we're doing, you know, to keep doing what you're doing and everything, you know, and so on, you know, just start the cycle of support like that, you know. Um, Thank you, Chanel. Thank you so much. I mean, (laughs) I've had people that have encouraged me in my times, and it makes a difference. Yes, it does. I just want to do that for others. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, we talk on many different levels, um, and it feels like we've known each other for years. <laughs> I think we both have that <laughs> effect on people. I think we have that in common. It's always like that, you know, when you're a genuine person and you're down to earth, you know. Yes, I appreciate that. Yes. So now your story about your experience um, in the Navy, I think, is a very real story, you know, and it's very deep. Um, and I believe that not too many people are aware of the things that can happen, you know, right in our own backyard. You know, when we when we send our loved ones off to the military, you know, we always fear the worst from an attack from, you know, the opposing military force um, and so on and so forth. But we never think or believe that something horrifying, you know, could happen, you know, within our own military compound, I think I said. I think I'm, I said that right. <laughs> you did. You did. You sure did. So, so what? Uh, what was your experience, Sharon, being in the in the Navy? Well, I left home at 19, went in the Navy, and you mm. know, ready for the world as we all tend to be. And yeah. when I got there, you know, it was everything was new, everything was different, um, just experiences that I had never had before, um, getting Mm. out, meeting different people, uh, really giving that trust to people that I found sometimes weren't worthy of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Chanel, I I lightly spoke with you before about um, 
some trauma that I experienced in the military. Yeah. And I suppose that that would be something that I would speak on now. Um, yes, just absolutely. Just to keep people aware. Yes. Um, when the whole Me Too movement started, I mean, it just kind mm. of rattled something in me. You mm. know, post-traumatic stress disorder is very real, and people say, oh, that's a cop-out. It's not a cop-out. I'm, mm. I'm a living testimony that it's not a cop-out. Yeah. It's, mm. it's an experience, you know, and a reality for a lot of people. And Absolutely. I Absolutely. guess I should say thank you, Lord, for choosing me. <laughs> but, um, mm. I, um, that know, is definitely that is strength to even yeah. say that, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He, he brought me to it and he got me through it. So I yeah. just look back and I say, you know, I was involved with a young man. Um, he was my boyfriend at the time. And yeah. I just went through this phase where, like I said, I was trusting when I shouldn't trust. Um, He allowed Mm -hmm. some of his friends, when we had a date night, he allowed some of his friends to uh, come in and uh, one was taking advantage of me and there were two more Mm -hmm. attempting um, or getting ready. And somehow or another I managed to frighten them off by appearing to wake up. Um, Mm -hmm. He had left me there in the room by myself with them. Um, I go down the hall to find him with his leg kicked up on a chair, uh, watching mm. music videos. I clearly remember music videos. <laughs> wow. Wow. And that was one experience. And I didn't report that when I was in the mm-hmm. military because I was in the wrong place. Mm. Though that shouldn't have mm. happened, I was in the wrong place. So I allowed that not wanting to get myself in trouble uh, to Mm -hmm. keep me from doing the right thing because it would have been Mm. the right thing to ensure that he was prosecuted because I don't know if that happened to other people and it could have been Mm -hmm. avoided if I had said something then. Mm. Um, But that experience wasn't the limit of what he actually did. Um, It was probably a year later and I can't remember exact dates. Um, I can't even recall the year. I think somehow or another I'm suppressing that part, which is okay. Mm-hmm. I don't need mm-hmm. that, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, he actually abducted me from a nightclub and drove me to a place that I was not familiar with at all, um, put okay. me in a room. I uh, had a microphone on, which this was just insane, but had a microphone on and was calling me all kinds of names. I don't understand any of that, Chanel. I don't understand oh, wow. why, you know, he was calling me these names. What was he doing? I was a good girl. I wasn't any, you know, scandalous, Sharon. I, I was a good girl, you know. Wow. And, and this was supposed to be your your guy, at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. He was supposed to be my guy. He was supposed to be, I mean, I was raised by a beautiful father, which I've shared a million times over and I'll do it a million yeah. times more, but I was raised yeah. by a beautiful father. So I wasn't looking for a father, you know, but I was mm, trying right. that I was thinking all men were like my father, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. Yeah. but that's just yeah. being young and naive. So, so what yeah. was, I mean, you said you mentioned that. Um, by the way, my God, you know, I I I apologize. I'm so sorry, you know, that you've gone through that uh, those horrifying, you know, experiences. Um, and I just commend you, you know, even now for even sharing your story. Um, but when you say that you were in the wrong place, does that mean that, like, when you're in the military, there are certain places that you should not go? Like, would you be penalized for going to certain areas or certain, you know, places? Okay, so that situation, uh, it was in the male barracks. And we as females, like, we could go visit our boyfriends or they could come visit us in the female barracks. But after a certain hour, you were supposed to be gone. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. it was more so that I had surpassed the time frame. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, okay. Wow. It's um mm, wow, this is 
Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Um, because you, Chanel. honey, you are an amazing woman. Go ahead. I'm listening. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to enter. I just wanted to, I mean, the whole part. No, you're when fine. I was mm-hmm. abducted, that part. Um, yeah. After so much time went by and he came and he took advantage of me at least twice during that, um, mm-hmm. I actually mustered up the strength to lock the doors behind him when he had went back in that room with that microphone, still calling me mm-hmm. the B words and all that. And mm. I knocked the screen out. I actually had found some money in his bag and I knocked the screen out of that window and I jumped out of an apartment building and it was on the first level, but I still had to climb. Mm. So, wow. But um, wow. I got out of that window and I ran across uh, the parking lot and I saw four females in a car just pulling in and I had the mm. handful of money and I says, will you please take me to Portsmouth? Will you please take me home? Cause that's where I was living. Mm. Mm-hmm. And, um, the girl looked at me and she said, this ain't my car. And I'm like, okay. Oh, wow. You know, I mean, I oh, was in total wow. distress. I mean, you could see it, but she said it wasn't her car. So, wow. I just, you know, I just kept going. Wow. And I, I ran over to the highway. I don't even know what the highway is, but I ran over to the highway and mm. I was walking. I was walking. I was just trying to get away from there because I didn't want him mm. to come get me, you know, all the wow. while I'm looking back. Yeah. And then a car pulled over, and there was a gentleman there, and he was like, are you okay? And I turned around with this handful of money, and I said the same thing. I said, will mm-hmm. you please? Yeah, I mean, naive. Wow. But I said, will you please take me home? Will you please take me to Portsmouth? I mean, I was so emotionally distraught. I was devastated. And wow. he was like, yeah, come on, get in. I have to make a stop first. And then I started oh, getting wow. nervous when he said he had to make a stop. But yeah. what he did was he went to his home, and right. I realized that was his home when his wife and his son came out, and his wife came okay. to the car door, and she told me that everything was going to be all right. And oh, I don't wow. know those people. I don't know who that was, but that was my rescue angel at that time. And wow. he took me back home. He took me back home. So, I mean, it could have been a blessing for them, you know, the money. Yeah, but absolutely. But it, it, it so much was a blessing for me because – it quite possibly did save my life at that time. Wow, Sharon. I mean, I can just only imagine. I mean, it sounds like a movie, like literally like a horror movie. Um, I can just only imagine, you know, the, the hurt, the pain, and the, the betrayal, the, you know, um, the <laughs> verbal abuse with the sexual abuse and, you know, the physical abuse from someone that you trusted your your heart with, someone that, you trusted, you know, your life with basically you welcomed this man into your life and had no idea that he was this horrible monster um, that would do such a thing. And, you know, we don't hear about things like this, you know, um, in the military, um, Sharon. So, 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 so what happened or what happened after, after that you got, you got back home and then, and then what happened? Mm Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I can flash forward years from that scenario. I got back home. Um, I told my roommate about it, but I didn't do a lot of talking about it. I mm-hmm. really didn't. Yeah. I, I basically just told her that he had taken me. Um, it was down in Virginia Beach area. He had taken me down to Virginia Beach. And um, mm. that was pretty much, I, I really didn't go into a lot of detail with that. Flashing forward yeah. years from that, um I got home and I actually ended up going through counseling, um, mm. which, you know, it, it's such a stigma in my culture. I'll say in my mm. culture, <laughs> you know, that <laughs> you just don't, you don't tell people, oh, you're going to counseling or you go, go to a shrink or, yeah, mm. I did that. I needed to open mm. this up. This thing needed to Absolutely. open up so it could heal properly, Absolutely. you know? Yes. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. I did that and, during that process, what was really funny um, was that Facebook started becoming bigger. Mm-hmm. And I happened to find that person on Facebook. Mm. So I actually confronted him on Facebook and told him that he had basically ruined my life and mm. 
I got closure. I got closure from him doing that. Wow. 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 Did he, did he ever respond? He apologized for any wrong that he had done, but never outright said, you know, I don't think it really felt like complete ownership from him, but Mm -hmm. it was enough for me just to be able to say to him, I'm stronger than what you were trying to pinpoint me to be. Mm, Amen. Amen. That's a, um, a very powerful um, statement, especially to say to the one that, you know, the enemy basically used as a tool to try to destroy you, you know, that I am so much better than what you try to do to me to try to destroy me. I'm still here. I am stronger Mm -hmm. and I am better than ever. My goodness. Much wiser. Yes. My goodness. So Sharon, what, um, what was your, cause I know, and it's so important that, um, uh, what you said that, you know, you went to um, counseling and everything, you know, um, and I totally agree. You know, we don't, um, we don't, we don't want to share with other people that we, you know, we're going to see a shrink or, you know, going through therapy, some kind of counseling, um, which um, I, I, that I think, <laughs> I mean, I've done it myself, you know, and even when I was in my <laughs> process, my healing process, I didn't want to share either. You know, you're hurting, you want to deal, you want to uh, uh, heal properly, like you said. You want to deal with Mm -hmm. the situation the right way. You don't want to share with other people, hey, I'm going through this, Uh, you know, so I can kind of understand what you. Some mm -hmm. people, I'm sorry, some people have to, um, some people have to take medication, you know, to get that under wraps, to be able to tolerate. I didn't do that. Um, Right. The way God made me, he made me in a way that, if I allow my mind to understand, then I'm mm-hmm. fine. Mm. And that's what mm. I had to do. I mean, mm. everything for me was just basically um, I went through some group therapies, hearing other women yeah. sharing things that they had gone through, and that yeah. was really healing. That was healing. Yeah. And mm. the more I shared my story, the more I shared with them, the other women in the yeah. group, the yeah. easier it became to actually see that it wasn't me that was um, being risque with my behavior. It was that he was wrong. Mm. Yeah. You know, and, and that it wasn't your fault. There wasn't yeah. anything that you did wrong. Yeah. I think that's really important too, Sharon, because a lot of times when we as women, when we go through things like that, you know, we kind of feel guilty. We kind of blame ourselves. Oh, I should have done this better. Or, I should have been smarter. I shouldn't, you know, I should have looked out for this. There's always warning signs. I should have listened to these, sign, these signs. I should have done this. And then even we even take it so far as to make an excuse or even try to cover up, you know, what happened to us or try to, help, you know, try to help that right. person, you know, uh, right. trying to help hide right. that person and what they did um, to us, you know. And that, that's actually a natural um, reaction, re- regardless if it's right or wrong or whatever, you know, you are the, you know, we're, when that happens to you, you're, you are them, you know, um, but these are the emotions and the feelings and the thoughts, you know, that we have when we experience trauma, um, like that. And I think it's so important to pinpoint that because sharing so many women, so many of us, you know, we experience abuse on so many levels. It almost, it makes me want to cry um, because so many women don't share. So many women, you know, because we don't want to deal with the pain. We don't want to deal with what happened to us. We don't want to deal with the trauma. And a lot of us, we, we shun, you know, therapy. We shun counseling and everything, not knowing that that's actually the tool that God has for us to deliver us, you know? Absolutely. My goodness. So, Sharon, um, share, can you share how God um, um, healed you, like your healing, your healing process? Can you share what that looks like or what that looked like? It, it's kind of funny that you said that when you um, – asked me about my spiritual connection. You had made mention yeah. of it. I started mm-hmm. thinking, you know, when I look at um, something so simple as even looking at my Facebook post, I'll look back five years and I'll say, wow, okay, well, I didn't know I was feeling God like that. 
Well, I, mm. <laughs> you know, but I was telling God like that. I, I didn't realize yeah. it. And then I look back, you yeah. know, I look back six years. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Okay. Well, I, why am I feeling like this is brand new? Well, I think it's because <laughs> of the level being elevated. That's what I feel like. Mm. You know? Yeah. And just through everything that I've gone through, I had to, I suppose, come to realize that it wasn't me jumping out the window that was saving me. It wasn't the man in the car that was completely safe. It was God putting all of those pieces into place. Mm. And I had to really stop and look and see that whole picture. And um, Mm. I do that every day in life now. I do that every day in life now. And just the wonder of him, Chanel. Mm. Just the wonder. I'm in awe of him. Wow. So much, so many intricate little pieces, you know, yeah, that he put absolutely. together to bring us through everything, yeah. everything. We get the freedom to choose him and to follow him. And when we go astray, he doesn't say, uh-uh, you can't come back to me. Right, right. He never does that. Right. Well, never, never. It's, um, wow. It's uh, It's funny how, you know. Well, it's not funny, but, like, I just totally get you. I'm totally relating to everything that you're saying. It's like when you are going through the trauma experience, you're just in survival mode. You don't really think about, you know what I'm saying, the spirit, you know, the spirituality of the, you know, you don't look at it from that kind of aspect. You're really just in survival mode. Your mind goes into straight survival mode. I need to survive. I need to get out of this, I need to get help. I need to get away from this. I need to be in that place of peace. But when you are out, when God has brought you out of it, even though we don't acknowledge his presence, we can't feel him near, you know, near us or anything, um, he's right there protecting us, providing for us, keeping us, you know. The whole time. Yeah. And so many things that could have gone wrong like so many things that could have made the situation even worse you know mm, didn't happen don't like say that. Sharon, you, oh. <laughs> <laughs> honey <laughs> yes, isn't it a blessing yes. you know Sharon, you still have your mind honey you could have lost your mind you couldn't even you know you could have had the mindset to where you know you didn't go and get counseling you know and ended up you know Somewhere else, or you know what I'm saying? I God has been him. such a woo, honey. I Lord did. have mercy. It, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it felt like I was on the fence. You know, am I am I going to be yeah. here or am I going to be here? You know. On. But every time, every time, God never ceases to amaze me. When I get into a situation, um, most recently, you know, with my health, I don't know if you recall, but with my health. Um, mm-hmm. I had my knee going bad. I had a back injury. Just so many things mm-hmm. with my health. And mm-hmm. God just stepped in, Chanel. He wow. just stepped right in. And I, I feel like he said, okay, that's enough, baby girl. That's enough. That's enough. Oh, He's yeah. like, okay, now get on up and start doing the right thing. And I don't know yeah. if you recall or not, but I was listening to one of your shows. And I, I need mm. to tell you so much. Thank you for being obedient to God and continuing oh, wow. to do what you do and uplift oh, wow. people because it was during your show. And my son kind of laughs when I tell him about it, but it was during <laughs> your show that I was experiencing such a powerful connection with the Holy Spirit during one particular oh, wow. show. I can't even, Chanel, I apologize. I can't tell you the topic. But I know that everything that was being said there was spot on, and it was for me. It was wow. For me. And I, wow. Could feel, I could feel like electricity just running through my body as I laid there oh, on that bed. Oh, oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow, yeah. Sharon. Wow. And I mean, I, I, I had been waking up. I don't, you know, I had been waking up every night with this gut-wrenching pain in, in my stomach, I uh, went to the doctors. They couldn't figure anything out, you know. And oh, wow, Sharon. All gone. All gone. There's nothing there. 
God said that. God me. is amazing. Oh my goodness. Yes, he is. <laughs> yes, he is. Ah! Yes, he is. Wow. Oh, Lord, you are so awesome. I think I remember, Sharon, the show that you're talking I think that was when I had, I think it was Prophet Tess Green. I know I had her husband on, Prophet, um, I think his name is Jermaine Green. And then I had his wife on, and the two they of were them, on- honey, are powerful in the Lord. Yes, yes, they are powerful yes. in the Lord. I think that, yeah, I remember. Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. Girl, God amazing. Yes, he is. Oh, man. my goodness. Girl, I you got this. You, you encouraged me. You the more. See, 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 uh-huh. see what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. honey. I absolutely yeah. love you, honey. I love your spirit and everything. You know, I my love you. God. <laughs> oh my goodness! You know you. we're gonna have to, you know, link up and everything. I'm, to, I'm coming to Virginia soon, um, but I'll let you know. So, <laughs> <right>. <laughs> come on. Uh, oh, okay. So, um, what does, um, what does the the old like? Okay, we talked about the the you know the. Um, healing process and everything like um, can you um, can we just expound on that just a little bit like the the um, emotional um, barriers that you had to um, overcome and the reason why is because the reason why I want to expound on that a little bit is because um, there are people who there are a lot of men and women who are trying to overcome depression and uh, um, suicidal thoughts and everything. And, you know, uh, when we, I know for myself, you know, that um, when we experience trauma like that, even the healing process, these are the demons that uh, we have to overcome, you know, that uh, tends to, uh, that the enemy tends to sin, you know, against us when we're trying to, you know, overcome um, trauma, you know, so so like, what were some of the emotional barriers that um, you had to uh, that God had to, you know, help you become victorious over? Mm. Guilt, feeling mm. guilty mm. for for my part, guilty. Yeah. Mm. Um, needing needing to be forgiven. I needed to learn to forgive myself. And mm. me forgiving myself, then I was able to get to the part where, even though I still needed that that time when I could confront the person yeah. who wronged me, I, I still yeah. needed to forgive him as well, and I have. Yeah, you know. Yeah. yeah. And that that was really heavy for me. That was really heavy mm. for me. Um, mm-hmm. Not having people around me that love me to understand what I was going through, mm-hmm. because when you talk about something that you've gone through and you talk about it again and you talk about it again, it's bothering you. It's not yeah. healed. It's bothering you, and you need right. to get it out. Because if you don't get it out, then it's going to just keep bothering you and bothering mm-hmm. you. But they get tired. Yeah. People around you, they grow tired of hearing, oh, why don't you talk about something else? Well, this is the thing I need to get fixed right now. This is what's broken. Mm. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's um, very important um, to what you said, you know, that, you know, you had to forgive yourself, you know, even though, you know, just looking at the situation, it wasn't, you know, your fault, but we do go through the, the guilt anyway. Even when something happens to someone else that we love, um, that had absolutely nothing to do with us, you know, we can yeah, feel guilty still. Yeah, shame. yeah, it's the grieving process. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and it's just very, it's really, um, it's a powerful thing when um, God, helps us to forgive ourselves, you know, because that's the only way we're empowered enough you know, to forgive one <laughs> who seriously yes. help, hurt us, you know? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You hit the nail on the head with that one. Yeah. <laughs> Honey, yes. and, and I mean, it's just, 
Wow. And so you were, so I'm looking at your situation and God just, just totally turned your life, your mindset, um, your spirit, you know, completely around and, and just placed you in a place of, of, of power and strength for you to even go to the one that, you know, some of us are afraid to approach our, um, you know, uh, abusers or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Even if it's just on social media or a phone call, some of us are afraid to, you know, address the situation and probably trying to be in denial, you know, which is unhealthy, you know, like you said, um, mm-hmm. you know, and, and just, you know, from, 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 you know, out of fear, you know? Um, so that was really um, courageous, you know, of you to even go and say, Hey, yeah, you were wrong for what you did, and I didn't forget. However, I forgive you, and I'm better. <laughs> Thank you, I'm Sharon. better. Thank Absolutely. you. Thank you. That was all Absolutely. God. That was all God. Yeah. And yeah. I won't take that credit. Yeah. Absolutely. I won't take that credit. You know, I say when we mm-hmm. do things, we like to get our credit for it, so we shouldn't shortchange God. When he does something, we need to acknowledge it. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely, absolutely. And so many of us, we do. We take, yes, I did this. Yes, I was. I'm strong. I'm strong. I'm powerful. I'm courageous. Like, hey, God is like, okay, I had I'm something to do with all of that. <laughs> I had to do with all of that. You right. Sit down and be humble. Yes, respect God's gangster. That's how. I, that's how I put it. Look. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> oh, so what would you say to um that woman um that is going through um abuse? Um what would you say to encourage her um Wow. To live her life in a better way, you know, what would you say to her? Well, everything I say, I start with God. You know, you have to talk to God and ask Him to guide you out of that situation. You mm. have to leave. You can't stay in it. Yeah. Why? Why would you stay in it? Oh, you don't have the funds. Well, guess what? There's a place for that. <laughs> if you're looking mm. at TV, there's an app for that. Okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. You know, right. <laughs> There's an app for everything so, nowadays. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, it is. Really and truly. <laughs> but but yeah. I mean you, you have to get out of that situation and it's easy to say that. It's easy mm-hmm. for me to say that. You know, yeah. that wasn't completely my scenario, but it's easy for me to sit and say, Oh, well, why would you stay with an abusive husband? You better get out of there. Okay, I can say that. Where's she gonna go? Does she have children? Right. How how is she right. gonna take care of them? What mm. what what's gonna happen here? How how is that gonna work? Do they uh, share the same vehicle? You know, are there uh, limitations as far as financially that prohibit that? Mm. How can it be corrected? Right. Do you have a support circle? Do you have family mm. or friends that understand your situation that are willing to help you? You know, right. that's what you need. To, right. You need to. Ask God to point those people out in your life so that you yeah. can get to the healing place that you need to get to. Mm, absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. That's very, that's wow. Because, you know, you're right. There's, there's so many people who haven't gone through um, abuse and they don't understand. And that's their quote unquote advice. You know, why would you? You know, <laughs> why would she say, a lot of people say that. Well, why would she have stayed? You know, they must want to be abused. Why would she stay in, you know, that marriage or that friendship or that relationship when it was, you know, right. uh, you know, and I don't want to help because she's just going to go back to him and everything. Right. And so so people, <laughs> yeah, people fail to, they fail to realize that, you know, you still have to live even after, after that, mm-hmm. you know, and you really yeah. have to get to the, place where you are completely fed up, you know, but it's important what you said, Sharon, you really have to ask God for guidance on how to, mm-hmm. you know, the Bible says that when temptation is great, 
that God will provide for you a way of escape. And you brought my mind, Sharon, back to a situation. Yes. You brought my mind back to a situation that I was in that I had to ask God. Those that very that very question, you know, God, please, will you please, please, Lord, you know. I, I beg and pleaded with the Lord. I was all the way out in part of Illinois, girl, with my three children. <laughs> okay. Okay, there you go. There you go. <laughs> no man's plan, so honey. Glad. Yeah. I'm so glad you made it out, Chanel. Yes. Girl, okay, I am okay. too. The Lord, truly the Lord is good, you know, and God did. You know, he did that. He provided yeah. that way of escape. He sure did. Um, so what um, What advice would you give to that abuser, that man that is, you know, this, you know, acting like, you know this 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 monster. Um, what would you say? What would you say to to him? Well, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> what I feel in my spirit right now, you know, thank God, God is um, working on me as far as you know the way that I respond to a lot of things because, honey, what would I, I want know, to right? say to him? Girl, <laughs> tell me about it. <laughs> like what but, I want to say, <laughs> what I want to do is the question. Look, <laughs> look, Chanel, I'm not there anymore. I'm not there anymore. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Lord, deliver it to me. No, I'm just. Uh, I'm just thank you, Jesus. But, but Chanel, really and truly, um, I would, I would honestly have to say to him, you know, I, I would bring up and ask him if he had a mother or or a sister or a daughter, you know, Mm -hmm. if it was a man that was the abuser, you know, if it was a woman, then vice versa, you know, and would you want someone doing that to them? Right. Will you go to God and ask God to forgive you and cleanse you of that behavior, you know? Will you tell the person that you trespassed against that you would like to be forgiven. Will you will you do that? Are you willing yeah. to change? Mm. Mm. Because not being willing to change, there's really not too much to say. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um man, that's really deep. That's actually yeah, they really should, you know, think about that because, you know, who whatever woman is in their life or, you know, their family that they love, you know, I'm sure that they wouldn't want anything like that, you know, things that they've done to women. They don't they wouldn't want that to happen to the woman, um, you know, in their family or, you know, their child, their daughter. They wouldn't want that to happen to them, you know. Right. It's something that um they need to think about, you know. A lot of them need help themselves, you know. A lot of them probably right. experience something Growing up, probably, and they never, you know, gone through the healing probably. process. They never dealt with it. A lot of times, right. that's what happens. It ends up being a horrible, uh, vicious cycle, you know. And uh, that's what that's it why. Mhm, mhm. Because you know it's true. You know, hurt people hurt people. They're yeah, they're, hurt, they're hurting people. You know, and and I found out too, Sharon, that um, um, or did you find this out when you were? going through therapy that, you know, it's really not about, uh, you know, the situation with the abuser. It's always about power, feeling in control. It's really because they felt somewhere in their life or somewhere within themselves, they feel out of control. There's something that is bothering them that they cannot control. There's something that probably yeah. happened to them in their past that they could not control. And so now they're all, they have this power trip kind of thing, you know. Oh, exactly. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I just think, yeah. I think it's important for, uh, ab- because abusers can be women as well, you know. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they can. So, I, yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's important that both, you know, men and women, you know, will go out and just seek the help that they need. And, you know, to come out of denial. You can't sweep things under a rug because just like you said, you know, it'll keep ticking. It'll keep bothering you. It'll keep, 
eating away at you, you know, and you, you know, yeah. your insides, you know, your, your, your mental, your spiritual health, your emotional health will continually deteriorate. You know, yeah. you become yeah. this, you know, you'll become more and more of this monster, um, even the more, you know, until you get the help that you need. And as long as you go around hurting people, you know, you're building up, you know, the world calls it karma, but you're building up that reciprocity, you know. Something could yeah. happen to, you know, your loved one. You're going out and you're abusing others, you know. But and they, You know what, Chanel, they, they, don't, mm-hmm. they don't think about that. and it, it probably goes back to they just don't think. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Sometimes your emotions and, um, you know, just a negative way of thinking clouds your uh, judgment, you know, yes. knowing right from wrong and doing right from wrong. All you can think about is what the enemy is putting in your face or, you know, telling you in your ear, you know, about this, this horrible thing or how, you know, this is a hard, even though it's an unhealthy way to deal with whatever happened to you, this is the only thing that you see. And so your entire mindset, your focus is on abusing somebody else. Good Lord in heaven. Mm -hmm. And not weighing out the consequences. That's right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. There are so many um, uh, men, no matter, you know, uh, their racial um, status or whatever, you know, um, in the prison system who have, you know, you know, been, you know, rapists and, you know, child molesters and so on um, and so forth, you know, and, and, and then they end up going through things in the prison system, you know. Oh, Man, yeah. it's just a horrible, yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a horrible, horrible thing. Um, wow, but I just commend you, Sharon, honey. Um, you are a spectacular uh, woman. You are full of love, you know in spite of, you know, the things that you had experienced. So many people, you know, walk around, you know, feeling sorry for themselves, for themselves you know. Some even, some even you know, uh, walk around bitter. But, honey, you are the exact opposite. <laughs> you are so well, full of thank love. You. And <laughs> you're so vibrant thank and, you, you know, aw, you know, no problem. I, <laughs> I, I, I think. I think that what I went through, Chanel, I think that everything mm-hmm. that I went through, um, when I went through that situation, I mm-hmm. he took enough from me, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't want yeah. he can't have my happy. God gave me mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. I'm keeping that. That's mine. Yeah. Near my A-10. The joy of the Lord Absolutely. is my strength. Yes. 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 Yes, that's for Let me have my happy, my happy, my coffee, and my Jesus. Come on. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <That's> it. <laughs> yes, absolutely. We're absolutely. I think that, yeah, honey, that is, that's something that every woman should say. You know, no matter what we experience in life, uh, no, you can't have my happiness. I declare no. you cannot. You will not feel my joy. <laughs> it's not up for grabs. Nope. No yeah. way. Yeah. And right. It's not an option Mm-mm. <laughs> at no. all. You don't get that option. You can have leather seats, Mm-mm. but you can't have my happy. Come on. <laughs> oh, say that. Absolutely. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> I love how, you know, you just keep God first, you know, in all that you do, uh, you make sure that you give God, you know, the glory and his credit, you know. Um, what would you say that, what would you say to, you know, uh, anyone who's who's going through anything, uh, you know, what God uh, could do for them, you know, what would you say? What advice? What I would say, honey, what I would say is if he brought me through everything he brought me through, and I'm already looking ahead because, you know, when you're trying to do right by God, then there's always mm-hmm. going to be those monkey wrenches that come thrown at you. So I'm looking ahead mm-hmm. that he's going to continue 
to take me through everything I need to go through in life. I would say yeah. as long as you keep him first and you hold on to him and you ask yeah. him for guidance, you know, then everything else, everything else falls into place. God is the one who creates. You know, he created all of this. He knows how it works. He's got the master mm-hmm. plan. We don't know. Absolutely. So you ask him. Mm-hmm. You ask him. Everything that we need is within us, right or wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely, yes. My goodness. Um, it has been an absolute pleasure sharing <laughs> having you on, mm-hmm. honey. I just again, I really feel honored, you know, that you would even share your story, honey. Uh, you know, outside of, you know, the support uh, group that you, you know, had, you know, going through your your healing process. You know, I just I'm just really honored, you know. Um man, it's just a Thank blessing. You, I wanna mm-hmm. say Oh, no problem at all, honey. No problem at all. Um, But I want to say to um, the listeners, um, if you've gone through um, abuse or if you're going through abuse, we want to encourage you to get the help that you need. I think Sharon said something that was really important. I don't think you even noticed um, exactly what you said, Sharon, but um, you said something about God wanting us to, uh, you know, forgive ourselves or, you know, forgive others. And it's just really important to um, know that God wants you in a place where you are taking care of you. You have to take care of your mental health, your spiritual health, your emotional health, your physical health. You have to take – God wants – God's desire for us is to live a prosperous and abundant life. Life. He wants us to live a life of abundance, not just yes. financially, not just spiritually, but in every yes. aspect of the word abundance. Yes. And, and and the only thing I think, Sharon, that would keep us from, you know, from living that lifestyle is our own mindset. So that's why, you know, the, you know, <laughs> that's yes. why the Bible says, now. you know, that. Uh-huh. Go ahead. Go ahead, Sharon. You know, I was just going to say, you know, another little tidbit. I always say have an attitude of gratitude. And when yeah. you are grateful for everything that you have, yeah. huh, it's going to multiply. Mm. Absolutely. It works that way. Yeah. And when you, you know, when you want to help others. You know what I'm saying? Your hands are open mm-hmm. for God to bless you even the more, you know? So it becomes a cycle of blessing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, we ma'am. Get our mindsets there, you know? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> that's, yes, ma'am. Yeah. That's why God wants us to, you know, have a renewed mind, renew our mind, have the mind of Christ, you know? Yes, Chanel. I don't want. I don't, I don't like preaching, but honey, I, go ahead. You want to say something? <laughs> no, no. You girl. go ahead. You preach. Go ahead, uh-uh. preach, girl. <laughs> what go were you getting ready to say? <laughs> no, I mean, what were you no. Say? I was just no. <laughs> I'm with you. Um, I was just really. I was thinking about, um, you know, this mentality that I used to have. And yeah. I almost feel embarrassed to say it, but I'm going to say it anyway. You can say it anyway, this girl. mentality and this thought in my spiritual walk, well, yeah. oh, I got plenty of time to get right with God. Oh, I got plenty of time. And then it went from I got plenty of time to the next level for me was, huh, well, I'm not going to do that yet because if I don't do that, then I know he ain't going to take me yet. <laughs> mm. Mm. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just telling you, yeah, I know. I told you yeah. it was almost embarrassing to say it. <laughs> no, you're fine. You're fine, honey. I don't see anything embarrassing about it. Well, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was just funny, though. I mean, you know, just uh-huh. when we think we're doing so much, we think mm-hmm. we, we're really controlling this and controlling that. God is right. putting us step to step to step to step. And we got to go through this one, then this one, then this one, then this one to get to the great one. Mm. 
Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. We are never in control, no matter how much we, you know, that's a sense, you know, sometimes, sometimes we get prideful like that, you know, we're doing, you know, we're doing a lot or whatever, you know, we're doing <laughs> what we're doing, you know, and sometimes we can tend to think that it's us. No, God is like, no, honey, this is all me. <laughs> My purpose that I have for your life. This is the, these are the things, you know, I have you here on this earth to do. This is my purpose for you, for you to give me the glory. <laughs> Amen, and that's what Mary. we should be doing. We should all be yes, striving to absolutely. do just what God's will is, not ours. Mm, that's it. You know, that's it. Absolutely. Absolutely. No matter what we've gone through in our lives, you know, everything has a purpose, you know, and just you know, the fact that you've gone through what you've gone through in your life, Sharon, and God brought you out of it, and you're better now, all things really do work together they for do. our oh, good. good. Yes. For us to yes. give God the glory. And we give God the glory not just with, you know, lip service, but we give God the glory by helping <laughs> others to make sure that, you know, to help others to go, you know, go yes, through it. You're yes. going to come out of this, you know, encouraging yes. that person that's going through what God brought us out of. That's giving God glory, isn't it? <laughs> yes, yes, the cheerleaders for Christ. That's right. Come on, you can make it. You can do it. That's right. God yes. Yes, you know, and absolutely. You know, you, you were mentioning about, you were mentioning about, um, you know, spiritual, I think, brokenness. I was and then it hit my spirit, you know, if you have a broken leg, then you're going to go and you're going to do what you need to do to get that healed up. But mm-hmm. if your spirit gets broken, you're going to have to do the same thing. Mm-hmm. You're going to mm-hmm. have to do the same thing. Yeah. You know, God will have help. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that radio show, that radio show, I'm telling you, Chanel, God, wow. God was using you, honey. He was using you. Oh, wow, That's- Sharon. That is very yeah. encouraging. I just, I thank you so much um, for all that you do. I feel like I owe you a lot, honey. I'm going to have to take you out to dinner and all that good stuff. <laughs> What's to eat, but girl? Once, a- <laughs> once again. <laughs> Um, you have been an absolute pleasure, girl. You know I'm. Uh, hey, I'm on it, honey. I'm a woman of my word. I promise. I promise. God help me. <laughs> I promise. Uh, no, and, but uh-huh. and being so, a good steward, and yet my body being my temple, I actually, Chanel, ironically, am supposed to start another workout regimen tomorrow. So. Hopefully okay, this well, will be one that I can do stick with. Yes, you get that done, honey. But we are uh, out of time. And so, once again, Sharon, thank you so much, honey. You have been an absolute pleasure. Once again, I'm going to have to have you back on, hon, really. Um, I want to thank the listeners for listening in. Um, I hope that someone's, I hope someone was encouraged, enlightened, and restored. I hope somebody got a bit of advice that they can apply to their lives to make it that much more uh, better. Um, so uh, with that being said, I'm going to pray really quickly. Um, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just, uh, first of all, Lord, we want to acknowledge you, Lord God, how amazing you are, how wonderful you are, how powerful um, you are. We thank you for being all-knowing. We thank you for being power for us. We thank you for your saving grace, Lord God. We thank you for brand new mercies every morning. We thank you for uh, 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 sitting on the throne, you, Lord God, because you reign, Lord God, and you are the only true and living God. You are the only wise God. You are omnipotent, Lord God. You're omniscient, Lord God. You are omnipresent. You're ever with us, Lord God, and we thank, thank you for you. the sacrifice you made for us, Lord God. We thank you for the dominion that you've given to us, Lord thank God. And right now, God, I just lift up my listeners. I lift up even Sharon, the guest, Lord God, and I thank you for her, and I thank you for the guest, Lord God, and I thank you, Lord God, for deliverance, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. God, I pray, Lord God, that this show helps change somebody else's life, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. God, we pray for protection, Mm -hmm. Lord God. Give your angels charge over us to watch over us, protect us, and keep us in all of our ways. Lord, we love you. 
And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen again. Yes. And I'd like to thank Amen. you all once again for tuning in to Let's Talk Talk Show right here on Elations Radio. We'll see you next Tuesday, same time, 7 p.m. Central, 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You all have a wonderful and amazing night. Good night. Good night, Sharon. And I'll talk to you Love soon. Love you. Good night, Shalom. Love you Thank too, honey. You. All right. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye.